enough of that. <laughs> that. That seriously would have gone on for another couple minutes had I not stopped it right there. It, this is going to be a long enough series as it is without me adding another couple minutes of that, but I really wanted to see the, uh, the Gran Turismo logo pop up. That's like my favorite part of that entire opening sequence, so... There we go. What's going on, everybody? Your host, AMF1534, here. Welcome to my brand new Let's Play series. The one that started the legendary franchise, Let's Play Gran Turismo 1. It's, uh, it's crazy, man. This, uh, this game came out in 1998. It took them five years to develop it. And uh, this ended up being the highest-selling PS1 game of all time. I think it was uh, it clocked in at 10.85 million copies, which is crazy to think, considering that Gran Turismo 2, which a lot of people consider to be the best driving game ever that there ever was, uh, that one was only the third best-selling game, which was still like 9 million copies. It was crazy. So, we are going to uh, play the original one. I played a lot more of GT2 when I was growing up, so I never really played this one as much. So, my knowledge of this in comparison to when I did a series of Gran Turismo 2 a couple years ago, it's going to be a little bit a little bit shaky, but we're going to have a great time with this. I love the Gran Turismo series with every inch of my heart, and so I'm really excited to do this. I've uh, I've been putting it off for a couple years, which, uh, by the way, shameless plug time. If you guys want to check out my Let's Play series of Gran Turismo 2, which was the longest series I ever did on this channel, uh, I will leave a link to the playlist in the description of this video if you guys want to go check it out. It was a lot of fun. So, luckily, this game isn't quite as long as uh, GT2 was, so we don't have to worry about this taking me, you know, 11 and a half months to take care of. <laughs> it it'll be a little bit shorter than that. So, one of my favorite things about the Gran Turismo series is just the fact that the game is so expansive, and there's just so much to do all the time. And I think one of my other favorite facets about this game is that before you can do, like, 90% of the material in this game, you have to go through license testing. It's just like being 15 years old all over again, <laughs> going back into, uh, back to driving school. So, we'll be taking care of the B-Class license today, uh, before we do anything else, because obviously we need to have those, so... I just, I love the fact that there's so many brands available here. It's obviously not anywhere as large and uh, and wide as, as Gran Turismo 2 is, but this game, for its time, was completely insane. And uh, one of the other things that I absolutely adore about Gran Turismo games is the uh, the soundtrack of this is absolutely fantastic. Like, this, this game has a couple of my favorite pieces in all of the Gran Turismo series, which... The, uh, the Mitsubishi um, menu is, oh my god, it's, it's amazing. I'll let you listen to it. Oh man, it's great. A couple of my other favorites are Honda Acura. Yeah, they got a, they got a really great one. Mazda has a great theme. And then also, uh, good old American Muscle down here. Chevy's got a cool one, too. So, that, that's... any Anybody that loves a good quality game soundtrack, this is this is definitely one to mess around with. It, it is simply fantastic. And uh, I think the other the other thing that I really love about this, they obviously, a lot of these, a lot of these uh, manufacturers, they have a lineup of brand new cars that you can buy, and you can, uh, you know, you can take a look at all the specs for those of you that are really into cars. Uh, you really get a lot of pertinent information about this. Uh, they give a nice little blurb of information about, you know, each model car itself, which I think is really cool for anybody that's, uh, that's looking to you know, brush up on information on cars, and just, you know, having that uh, that type of stuff available, they really, really spent, uh, you can totally see why it took them five years to develop this game, because there's just, there's so many intricate things that go into it. When you go and buy a car, you can obviously, uh, every manufacturer in this game has their own uh, little, you know, tune-up garage where you can go in there and you can, you know, buy new parts for the engine that'll increase the performance, you know, buy new tires, put a turbo kit in there, change the muffler, uh, with others, you can do things with weight reduction to make it more aerodynamic and uh, just make it more efficient on the road. You can get put racing mods on your car where it just, you know, it's it, everything is just so awesome in here. I, I could sit here and just ooze out fandom all day long, but I won't do that. I, I as you guys will, for those of you that watch my Gran Turismo 2 series, I already went really in-depth with that. So a, a lot of the same things will apply here where... Um, 
you know, they, a lot of these manufacturers will have special model cars like this one here, the GTO LM edition. You can uh, change, you know, colors for it. It costs insanely large amounts of money. In some cases, you can get these cars as rewards for doing things like endurance races uh, or other special events. And these cars, obviously, are going to have ungodly amounts of, of horsepower. And they're usually going to be used for, like, end game events like championship series and maybe endurance races and such. So, it's a, it's a fun time. But there are places where you can buy used cars like Honda and Acura. Uh, ones that have really large uh, libraries of cars. Like this. Oh, look at that. I don't know if that's actually supposed to be that way. I'm playing the emulated version of this, so I don't think that these uh, three um, car models that are up at the top of that, I think they're probably supposed to get cut off in the menu thing there, so it's probably like a little graphical glitch. So, But this is a nice way, if you're strapped for cash, that you can walk in here and pick up a, a car that you may need for like a little uh, special thing. Uh, just like one of the lower end... Um, racing sets or something so it certainly helps out to have these types of things available so I think that before I spend too much time going in through a lot of the information that I've already gone through in a separate uh, series we'll just get down to business we'll go right in and start up our license test we're only gonna do the B license today just because I don't want to do <laughs> what I did in uh, the first episode of GT2 where I ended up you know going on for like 20 minutes of talking and uh, not really getting into the gameplay until really the second episode I think we'll really jump into some of it right now so uh, the the big thing too is that I really want to re-familiarize myself with playing games like actual driving simulator games like this because I've been playing Grand Theft Auto San Andreas for the last eight months <laughs> and let's just say that the driving in that game is just a little bit different than this. <laughs> the the uh, the physics in that game for driving are just as rubbery and uncomfortable as possible. So this is just like an absolute treat on the eyes to be able to drive cars and have it respond in a way that you would actually expect a car to respond in. So I'm I'm totally down with it, man. I I really do hate some of these some of these driving um, tests in the beginning because the cars are so slow. I totally get it though, like it really helps for the people that are novices in this game, people that they don't want to just be thrown out there using like a crazy 700 horsepower car when you're trying to learn the ropes of playing. I mean, they really make it so that it's easier for you to kind of develop your skills on how to, on how to use everything, on how to kind of just get your sea legs, if you will. Did I get it? Oh, wasn't the t I think the time limit was 35 seconds, so we barely got under the uh, under the line for that. Oh, we got a silver. I guess that wasn't too bad. I think that the I, I'm not sure. Uh, quote me. I, I I don't quote me here, but I think that the uh, the process will still stand here as it did in uh, in GT2. But I think that if you get a gold medal in all of the license tests, that you'll actually get a uh, I think that you'll actually get like a uh, like a secret vehicle. Uh, at the end of it, it'll just like pop up in your garage if you can pull it off. I'm obviously not going to do that because I haven't played this game in God knows how many years. So uh, I don't think we're gonna we're gonna we're not gonna shoot for that. If I get a gold medal during the course of this, then you know that'll be awesome. But I'm not really counting on it. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm not really much of a betting man, but I'll say that we'll get one over the course of this uh, B license test. I'm usually good for for one of those in the in the course of that. I just, I love hearing the engines in this game, it's great. I just love hearing it rev all the way up. Okay, and brakes! Oh god, oh god! Oh no! Oh god! Uh, Alright, yep, went a little bit too crazy with that. I, I forgot that you really do need to tone it down a lot, a lot quicker. Right around like the 900, uh, 900, was it 900 yards? Meters? Oh, so it is meters, okay. So, quick little story. This, like, totally freaked me out the other night. So, I'm hanging out in my office here the other night, and uh, I was I was playing some Bloodborne, and uh, I got to the third boss in Bloodborne, which was, I think it was what the, uh, I don't even know what the name of the beast was. It was, like, some, some crazy, crazy powerful beast guy, and he just beat the living hell out of me. Like, it wasn't even fair. Did we get it? Ah, oh, we failed again. Damn it. So it's got to be right inside of the 900 meter mark. Uh, so I'm playing it, and uh, and after I had died a couple times, I, I just decided to call it off. I was like, all right, I'm good, I'm good. And so it was like, 
probably like 1.30 in the morning, and I was getting ready to go to bed, and so I walk through the garage and, and uh, go, I go inside, you know, to the kitchen. There's a little hallway between the, the, uh, the garage, it goes through the pantry and into the kitchen, where everything is, and, uh, and so I walk in there, and there was like just a, like a little light on in the pantry. Come on, 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 yeah, there we go, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, we got the gold. There it is. There's the one. <laughs> there's, there's the one that we're that we're comp for this for this segment here. So I so I walk into the pantry and uh, I noticed something looked a little bit off. I, I couldn't quite figure it out real quick, but I looked on the floor and it looked like there was something on the floor. And so I kind of walked in there and I, I turned the light on, I turned the light on in the pantry, and I looked down and I'm not even kidding you right now. I'm not joshing you. I'm not steving you. I'm not even fretting you right now. But I look down, and there's just like this crazy line going all the way from the entrance to the garage, all the way into the kitchen, like halfway across the kitchen to where uh, to where my cat's uh, water bowl was. There was a line of, I'm not even kidding, probably like 10,000 sugar ants. Like, they were everywhere. It was so gross. It looked like it looked like the floor was moving. It was like a it was like a line that was probably be about as thick as like the width of the palm of my hand. Like they were, and they were just it was just oh it looked like it looked like a, just a wave of them and it was so disgusting. And so I'm freaking out. My dad's asleep on the on the uh, my dad's asleep in the recliner chair in the other room. And I was like trying to find a way to deal with him without having to uh, without having to wake him up. And so I went and grabbed some raid, but then uh, then both of the cats come into the kitchen. I'm like, dude, I gotta I gotta figure out where I can put these two so that I'm not just spraying a bunch of raid all over their food and their face and stuff. So I try to put them away, and I just I can't get them away. And so I was like, I'm gonna need help with this. So so I wake up my dad, who's just sawing logs in the other in the other room. Like it's it sounds like a whale is wrestling a bison in there. It is just. <laughs> Oh, yep, that's not good. That thing really, that thing got out of my hands real quick there. <laughs> I didn't say this was going to be pretty, ladies and gentlemen. It, uh, it, it's going to take me like an episode or two or three or four before we really, before I really get back into it. I'm normally pretty good at racing games. Uh, that's, that's definitely one thing that I particularly excel at. But when, when you're playing stuff like this where things are a little bit more technical and you really got to be, uh, you really got to be on the up and up here, it's... I, I will I will make some mistakes. That's that's damn for sure. that's for damn sure. That's, that's also damn for sure as I was about to say. So I, I wake him up. I was like, hey, Dad, Dad, Dad. <laughs> I had to say it like five times, and he's he's like, what, what, what? And I was like, um, we've got a bit of a problem. He's like, and that's the, like he and so I think he thought it was something more serious. He's like, what, 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 what is it? I was like, I was like, you should probably come take a look in the kitchen. We've got a bit of a a bit of an insect problem in here. He's like, he's like, oh, no, that doesn't sound good. I was like, it's not, it's not. And so he gets up and he's like all groggy and he puts his glasses on and he looks down at the floor and he just goes, ah! <laughs> he's like, jeez, where'd they all come from? I was like, probably the garage, I guess. But he's like, well, what are they, like, what are they in here going after? Because like, we, we get ants that go in there all the time, but like never in that volume. He's like, man, there must have been like a, there must have been like a hatching or something, which just sounds like a, like an 80s horror movie or something. He's like, oh, great. He's like, all right, get the cats out of here. We, we, we don't need them mulling around in here while we're dealing with this. And so we, we, go, and, we go and put them away in the bathroom, and uh, we just we both go and... Uh, he goes and grabs, like, a sponge out off the off the sink, and uh, I grab the raid, and he just wets the thing and just starts just scooping them up off the floor, and, like, the whole surface of the sponge was just black with dead sugar ants. Oh, it was so gross. It was nasty. It was, oh, it was simply, not simply lemonade. It was, it was simply disgusting. Oh, it was awful. And so we just, we just layered the floor with, uh, with Raid, and we just decided just to keep the cats out of there. But I've never, I've, I've only seen, I've only seen a volume of ants like that once in my entire life outside of that when, uh, back at my old house, when I was a little kid, we were uh, we were renovating one of the rooms, and so we had all the furniture out of there, and we left the window. I think uh, we left the window open because we were painting in there. And uh, I walk I walked in there um, just because I was I was going to the bathroom, so I had to walk by it down the hallway. And uh, I looked at the window, and like it, it I kind of peeked in there real quick, and it also looked like the floor was moving. And I looked at the window, and there's just like this giant giant pile of carpenter ants that are just funneling into my room through the window and I was just like, Dad! The floor! It's moving! <laughs> and he 
he's just like, what? What are you talking about? I was like, come in here! Check it out! And he, he takes one look at the floor and he's just like, oh god, this is awful! And he went and grabbed like a water jug and he was like scooping them up into that thing. And uh, he was like throwing them out the window and we ended up having to like bomb the house and we had to, you know, go out for like ice cream and mini golf or something. We had, had to be out of there for, for a couple hours. It was, dude, it was wacky. It was wacky tobacco. I don't know why I said tobacco instead of tobacco, but whatever, you know. It was, uh, it was, it was, it was bonkers, man. I just, that's, that's the only thing I don't like about living in this house. There's so many trees and bushes and crap nearby that they're just everywhere. You can't get away from them. When I lived in my other house, there wasn't really a lot of, uh, a lot of trees and, and stuff like that nearby. So we didn't really have to deal with ants much at all. Like every once in a while we'd get a few and there'd be like a small hatching of them. And we'd get a few of them in the kitchen, but we'd put like some tarot down and it would just totally destroy them. They'd be stupid enough to be like, mmm, sweet! And they'd just grab it and take it back to the to the nest and everyone would eat it and just explode and die or whatever. <laughs> I don't really know how that process works, but I know they die. And so I'm just going to go top shelf with that and assume that they all explode. But yeah, dude, it was wild. So here we go. We're going into the last test of this uh, of this B license. If we can get it, then uh, then the uh, the lovely, extremely stressed out lady in the passenger seat that's uh, is sweating profusely, hoping that we don't totally destroy this uh, this horrendous looking uh, Mazda. Uh, what is it, Mazda Miata? Please don't wreck this thing. Please don't wreck this thing. I just went to the chiropractor like a week ago and I got my back reset after the stupid idiot decided to pull a donut in the middle of their test. She's just waiting idly by for me to, to hopefully finish this thing so she can uh, put in her two weeks and quit her job. I think we're going to be okay though. Everything looks like it's going pretty well so far. As long as we don't crash into the wall up there, I think we're going to be alright. Everything's gonna be all right. I'll tell you one thing that I love about uh, Gran Turismo 1 in comparison to GT2 that I absolutely adore is that, um, oh wow, they're really, they're really giving me the long one here. I forgot about that. Um, is the in-race music in GT1 is 199% better than the stuff that was in Gran Turismo 2. If, if I have to hear the music in GT2 again, for, for in race stuff, dude, I am gonna lose my mind. When I when I did my Let's Play series of that, which was 141 episodes, dude, I about died. <laughs> there there were times that I thought I was about ready to pull what little amounts of hair I had right out of my scalp. We got it. Hey, we got it. All right, that's what I'm talking about. It may only be a bronze, but we did the damn thing. And so with that, we've got our lovely B license collector's plate, because. <laughs> That's not really what licenses look like in the real world, but you know what? It's it's totally fine. So, with that said, my friends, we are good to go in this episode. I guess it actually ended up being the same length as the pilot episode of my other one. I was sitting here saying, "Oh, I'm not going to talk as much. We'll get down to the we'll get down to the real stuff, and it won't I won't waste as much time." But it ended up being the same length, anyways. So, my friends, when we come back on the next episode of Let's Play Gran Turismo. We're going to go out and buy our very first car, and we're going to start getting down to the real racing. So, I hope that you guys decide to stick around for me on this awesome journey. It won't be nearly as long as GT2, but it's still going to be a lengthy one anyways. So I hope you guys stick around. I'm going to have a lot of fun. I hope you guys will too. So, this is AMF1534 saying thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye.